Hey y'all, Merry Christmas, enjoy the season, happy Sunday, happy weekend. Today is Sunday, January 15th, 2023. Shall be reading to y'all the Gospel of Luke, chapter 15, verses 1 through 32, and Acts of the Apostles, chapter 15, verses 1 through 40. And let us begin. And please make sure to check out my other videos and playlists. I started this channel about five or six years ago, and I have over 360 subscribers, so not that much. But anyway, I have a variety of videos and playlists out there. Mostly music, but I have a lot of Bible readings and prayers and other videos as well. Anyway, for the third or first time, let us begin. Gospel of Luke. Luke chapter 15. The parable of the lost sheep. The tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to listen to him. But the Pharisees and scribes began to complain, saying, this man welcomes sinners and eats from them. So to them he addressed this parable. What man among you have a hundred sheep and losing one of them would not leave the ninety-nine in the desert and go after the lost one until he finds it? And when he does find it, he sets it on his shoulders with great joy. And upon his arrival home, he calls together his friends and neighbors and says to them, Rejoice with me, because I have found my lost sheep. I tell you, in just the same way, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who, who, over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous people who have no need of, uh, no need of repentance. The Parable of the Lost Coin or what woman, having ten coins and losing one, would not light a lamp and sweep the house, searching carefully until she finds it? And when she does find it, she calls together her friends and neighbors and says to them, Rejoice with me, for because I have found the coin that I have lost. In just the same way, I tell you, there will be rejoicing among the angels of God over one sinner who repents. The parable of the lost son. And then he said, A man had two sons. The younger son said to his father, Father, give me a share of the estate that should come to me. So the father divided the property between them. After a few days, the younger son collected all his belongings and set off to a distant country, where he squandered his inheritance on a life, uh, on, on a life of dispatation. Dispatation. When he had freely spent everything, a severe famine struck their, that country, and he found himself in dire need. So he hired himself out out to one of the local citizens who sent him to his farm to tend to tend the swine and he longed to eat the, his fill on the pods on which the swine fed but nobody gave him any coming to his senses he thought how many of my father's hired workers have more than enough food to eat but here am i dying from a hunger i shall get up and go to my father and I shall say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me as you would treat one of your hired workers. So he got up and went back to his father. While he was still a long way off, his father caught sight of him and was filled with compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. 
I no longer deserve to be called her son. But his father ordered his servants, Quickly, bring the fine, finest robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Take the fattened calf and uh, fattened fatten calf and slaughter it. Then let us celebrate with a feast, because this son of mine was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. Then the celebration began. Now the older son had been out in the field and on his way back, as he neared the house, he heard the sound of music and dancing. He called one of the servants and asked what this might mean. The servant said to him, Your brother has returned and her father has slaughtered the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. He became angry, and when he refused to enter the house, his father came out and pleaded with him. He said to his father, he said to his father in, in, in reply, Look, all these years I have served you, and not once did I disobey your orders. Yet you never even gave me a young goat to feast on with my friends. But when your son returns, who swallowed up, but, but when, when, your son returns, who swallowed up your property with prostitutes, for him you slaughter the fattened calf. He said to him, My son, you are here with me always. Everything I have is uh, everything I have is is yours. But now we must celebrate and rejoice, because your brother was dead and has come to life again. He was lost. And has been found. And that was the Gospel of Luke chapter 15 verses 1 through 32. And before I go on to the Acts of the Apostles, Luke's second book, or letter, who knows, I really should um, dig into that to see if the Church Fathers refers to the Gospel of Luke and the Acts of the Apostles as kind of like letters or not. But anyway, the prodigal son, um, the what the parable that I just read, so um, just different homilies and sermons and talks um, I've heard. Um, so the prodigal son, when he is, uh, this is not my own interpretation. This is other people's interpretations. Um, but and you can also Google it too. But anyway, when the younger son asked his father for his share of the inheritance he was basically saying to his father i want you dead like i don't love you anymore that's just basically it in a nutshell then after um his father so generously gave him what his son wanted um his son went off and wasted wasted his money and the younger son thought he had friends, but those people were actually using him for his money. Um, then when, and remember, these are Jewish people. Jesus was a Jew. And at the time, um, God commanded Jews to not eat pork. And in, in the Jewish faith today, in 2023, 20, 20, that rule still applies in the Jewish faith that pork is unclean, so you should not eat it. So when the son, when the famine hit, um, he eventually, he was like at his wit's end and he was basically at the lowest of the low. And he was even yearning to eat the food that the swine, the pigs, the unclean creatures were eating because that's how desperate he was. Um, and then eventually, um, he made a, a, he made a resolution to, like, go back to his father, saying, like, basically, I screwed up, please forgive me, I, like, you don't have to take me back, because I don't deserve it, the son was saying. Um, then his father was, like, watching, looking for him every single day. 
um, like from a watchtower or something, then the father saw the son and it was like rushing down the path to meet him while the son is like trudging along, um, knowing he screwed up. But his father was like so excited to see him. I was like, I don't care. Yes, you made mistakes, but I don't care. I love you anyway. Um, and when the father ordered his servants to like give his son a beautiful robe and ring and everything else, I remember um, I was playing organ for part of a mass and this parable came up in the gospel and anyway so the priest he was preaching the homily and he was saying how um the son had to humble himself he would be so embarrassed because he had rags on but to further embarrass him to feel more embarrassed he had to to be whole again he had to basically um take off his rags and be completely naked nothing on him just him naked and he would have to like go in the bath and his father would like see him in this like vulnerable state um then the son got washed up and got clothed and everything else and basically the um the most humbling experience was when he had to like be naked and that's like the priest was talking about how that's basically confession reconciliation the sacrament of penance when i first received my first reconciliation um yeah that's how i grew up with it but anyway so yeah this is a little thing i wanted just to share then the older son, he was struggling with pride because, like, he was so mad. Maybe not pride, but he was definitely struggling with anger. In the movie Jesus of Jesus of Nazareth, um, the made-for-TV movie, um, that was made in the 1970s or 80s, Robert how uh, played the adult Jesus and Olivia Hussey plays Mary our lady but anyway the scene when um Jesus talks about this tells his parable is when um Matthew the tax collector um invites Jesus over for supper and the celebration and Peter is angry because he's always been with Jesus. And Peter then eventually um, leaves the boats and goes to Matthew's house. And Jesus is telling this parable, knowing that Peter is there at the door. Then at the end, um, Peter comes in and Peter is basically the older son and Matthew is the only younger son in the movie. Um, and Jesus, um, said, like, please, says the father, please, you are always with me, and etc., etc. And then eventually Peter and Matthew realizes their differences and becomes best friends. But anyway, um, but back to the priest, um, yeah, father was saying how the, um, Fading and everything was like reconciliation, confession. So, yeah, very humbling experience. But, I th yeah, I think that's basically it from that point. And now on to the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 15. Yes, this is a longer one. Oops. I made a mistake at the beginning of this video. Um, it's actually um, chapter 15, verses 1 through 
41, not 40, it's 41. So my apologies. Mia Copa. And now, <clears throat> on to Acts chapter 15. Acts chapter 15. Council of Jerusalem. Some who had come down from Judea were instructing the brothers, Unless you are circumcised according to the Mosaic practice, you cannot be saved, because there arose no little dissension and debate by Paul and Barnabas with them. It was decided that Paul, Barnabas, and some of the others should go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and presbyters about this question. They were sent on their journey by the church and passed passed through oh my gosh passed through Phoenicia and Samaria telling of the con telling of the conversion of the Gentiles and brought great joy to all the brothers. When they arrived in Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church, as well as by the apostles and the presbyters. But uh, and they reported what God had done with them. But some uh, from the party of the Pharisees, who had become believers, stood up and said, It is necessary to circumcise them and direct them to observe the Mosaic law. The apostles and the presbyters met together to see about this matter. After much debate had taken place, Peter got up and said to them, My brothers, you are well aware that from early days God made his choice among you that through my mouth the Gentiles would hear the word of the gospel and believe. I feel as if I had skipped somewhere. Okay, never mind. And God, who knows the heart, bore witness by granting them the Holy Spirit just as he did us. He made no distinction between us and them, for by faith he purified their hearts. Why then are you now putting God to the test by placing on the shoulders of the disciples a yoke that neither our ancestors nor we have been able to bear? On the contrary, we believe that we received through the grace of the Lord Jesus, and in the same way as they. The whole assembly fell silent, and they listened while Paul and Barnabas described the signs and wonders God had worked among the Gentiles through them. <laughs> um, the next section is about um, the dietary law. I, I laughed at that because when I was briefly talking about um, the parable of the... Oh my gosh, I can't think of the name. The lost son, the um, the second, the prodigal son. Okay, back to Acts. And actually, before I continue on, I will do a little talk about um, a few words about um, circumcision. So, um, I do not know off the bat why God wanted the Jews circumcised. But anyway, um... The circumcision first started back when Abraham um, had Isaac. So Isaac was a baby, but um, his older son, Ishmael, was around, I guess, 12 years old, something like that. So um, the older you are as a male, the more healing time that you need if you are going to get circumcised. With that being said, um, the Isaac, not Isaac, Abraham um, had a long healing time to do that. And Isaac and all the other um, Israelites at the time had a much slower faster healing time because of their age um 
so yeah then ishmael and the other people from ishmael's and hagar's um, tribe had a much longer time to heal from that but it kind of i don't want to say serve them right that sounds kind of cruel but it's is ironic um because isaac is was still is <laughs> the chosen um son from abraham to go through jacob and the 12 patriarchs all the way down to david and solomon and to jesus um because the jews are the chosen people and another thing without the jewish faith the Catholic Church would not be. So we so us Catholics have the Jewish faith to thank for that. But anyway. Um so that's enough about circumcision. So if you oh, another fun fact about circumcision. Did you know that um circumcision besides being a sign from God did you know that it's actually healthier to circumcise for baby boy rather than to have him not circumcised? But anyway. Now on to Acts again. James on dietary law. Okay, before I continue on. Um, dietary law. Dietary rules according to the Bible and stuff. So, um, the Catholic Church and the Orthodox Church and many of the Protestant churches, um, we all observe, um, we observe no meat on Fridays because, um, Jesus died on a Friday. We can basically eat anything. We don't have dietary restrictions on that. And during, like, the medieval ages, dark ages, and stuff like that, I can't remember the exact timeline, but anyway, um, so, so there is lords of the land, and there are poor people, and because of the Catholic Church and her rules, um, they... Basically, fish was a poor person's um, dinner. So they basically got the rich people to be the same as poor people because they had the rich people had to humble themselves. And with the traders, um, with the Europeans, with the um, Native American Indians, um, did you know that so beaver, did you know that beaver is a warm-blooded mammal? And it lives in water, basically. <laughs> but on Fridays, the Catholic Church allowed the beaver to be considered um, acceptable to eat. Um, the only warm-blooded animal that a person could actually, a Catholic could eat on a Friday. Because it lived with, in water, I think. And another more stuff about dietary laws, rules, and stuff is that Christians, um, especially Catholics and Orthodox um, people, we abstain from food. Um, there are different kinds of abstaining and fastings, but we abstain from meat on Ash Wednesday, Good Friday, all the Fridays of Advent and Lent. And that's like a mandatory thing. And we also, um, we are allowed to eat meat. We are encouraged to eat meat on the Fridays that are solemnities. Solemnities are, um, more important than feast days. And we are also encouraged to eat meat in celebration again on Fridays that are the octaves of, um, the Christmas octave, the Easter octave, and the Pentecost octave. The octave of Christmas, the octave of Chris, um, Easter, and the octave of Pentecost. An octave in a short term, in a nutshell, is basically um, 
Sunday lasts eight days. That's basically it. You celebrate each day as if it was Sunday. Um, so then back to the fish. Um, for Fridays, we are basically on the, if it's not a Lent or Advent, like, or a Great Friday or Ash Wednesday. Um, yes, we are allowed to eat meat. Um, according to the Canadian Catholic rules. And we are also, um, oh yes, and with the Lent, um, we are also, if we do by chance do eat meat, um, we are strongly encouraged throughout the year, but especially during Lent, um, to replace that with an act of charity. It could be praying an extra rosary, it could be, I don't know, going to another mass or something. Then I feel, oh yeah, the actual stuff that we are allowed to eat on Fridays of Lent is fish, of course, um, finned fish and shellfish. And we are also allowed to eat amphibians because they're cold-blooded. I don't know about reptiles. But anyway, that's just a little thing about um, Christianity. About their dietary laws. Oh, another thing. Also on Christmas Eve, um, so we celebrate Christmas. And according to different cultures, like the Polish culture, for example, I'm part Polish. So on Christmas Eve, there's like a 12-course meal on Christmas Eve. And we don't eat meat because it's also a day of, um, a day of abs absence from meat. Same with Holy Saturday, um, the Easter Vigil. So, yeah. After the Easter Vigil, we were allowed to eat meat again. Okay, <laughs> back to Acts of the Apostles. I apologize for this, all this rambling and stuff. <laughs> James on Dietary Law. After they had fallen silent, James responded, My brothers, listen to me. Simeon had has described how God first concerned himself with acquiring from among the Gentiles a people for his name. The, the words of the prophets agree with this, as is written. After this, I shall return and rebuild the fallen hut of David. From its ruins, I shall rebuild it and raise it up again, so that the rest of humanity may seek out the Lord. Even all the Gentiles on whom my name is invoked. Thus says the Lord who accomplishes these things, known from of old. It is my judgment, therefore, that we ought to stop troubling the Gentiles who turn to God, but tell them by letter to avoid pollution from idols, unlawful marriage, the meat of strangled animals, and blood. For Moses, for generations now, has had those who proclaim him in every town, as he has been read in the synagogues every Sabbath. Letter of the Apostles. Then the apostles and then the apostles and presbyters, in agreement with the whole church, decided to choose representatives and to send them to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas. The ones chosen were Judas who is called Barsabbas, Barsabbas, and Silas, leaders of the brothers. This is the letter delivered by them. The apostles and the uh, the apostles and the presbyters. We were brothers to the brothers in Antioch, Syria, and. Uh, and Celia of Gentile origin, greetings. Since we have heard that some of our number who went out without any mandate from us have upset you with our teachings and disturbed your peace of mind, 
we have, with one accord, decided to choose representatives and to send them to you um, along with our beloved Bar beloved Barnabas and Paul, who have dedicated their lives to the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we are sending Judas and Silas, who will also convey the same message by word of mouth. It is the decision of the Holy Spirit and of us not to place on you any burden beyond these beyond these necessities, namely to abstain from meat sacrificed to idols, from blood, from meats of, of strangled animals, and from unlawful marriage. If you keep free of these, you will be doing what is right. Farewell. Delegates at Antioch And so they were sent on their journey. Upon their arrival in Antioch, they called the assembly together and delivered the letter. When the people read it, they were delighted with the exhortation. Judas and Silas, who were themselves prophets, exhorted and strengthened the brothers with many words. After they had spent some time there, they were sent off with greetings of peace from the brothers to those who had commissioned, who had commended, commissioned them, to those who had commissioned them, commissioned them. But Silas decided to decided to remain there. But Paul and Barnabas remained in Antioch, teaching and proclaiming with many others the word of the Lord. Book five. The Mission of Paul to the Ends of the Earth Paul and Barnabas Separate After some time, Paul said to Barnabas, Come, let us make a return visit to see how the brothers are getting on in all the cities where we proclaim the word of the Lord. Barnabas wanted to take with them also John, who was called Mark. But Paul insisted that they should not take with them someone who had deserted them at uh, deserted them at Pamphylia and who had not continued with them in their work. So sharp was their disagreement that they separated. Barnabas took Paul and sailed to Cyprus. But Paul chose Silas and departed after being commended by the brothers to the grace, uh, grace of the Lord. He traveled through Syria and Cilicia, bringing strength to the churches. That was Acts of the Apostles, chapter 15, verses 1 through 41. Thank you for watching. I hope these videos are helping you in your own faith journey. See you in the next video. Enjoy my channel, please. And please share please subscribe. Merry Christmas. Enjoy the season. God bless. I love you all.